Looking on a, another garden bed here. We've done half of it, we've finished that side there, but I still gotta dig all the inside out. I'll get around to it. So, but I've got to finish this trenching here. Now this one here, we got a little bit excited, went a bit too deep because it was really soft the other day. We don't have to go that deep, but have a look at it. It's looking really good. All the cauliflowers and cabbages have taken off and we've got our spring onions and weeds growing in here as well, which we've got to get rid of. So I'm going to trench all this side here out today, get this side ready, the trench and the boxing is, and then we're going to organize, organize a combust and mulch as well. I can't believe these dogs. <laughs> Come. Who's the guilty one? Hello? What are you doing? Hey, I just opened this hot house up to get some air in here because these seedlings started to wilt over and the dogs got into the blood and bone already. These are my lettuce seedlings that I'm going to get into the ground. We've got mixed salad here, we've got it all year round and a, a green mignonette and obviously some more silver bed over there. Chicory to plant still, so there's still a lot more. I've got carrots to start planting, uh, celery as well that I want to get into these beds here. So I've got to prepare that, but let's go. What's wrong? <laughs> She's okay. She's just had a good hit with the blood and bone. Let's go and check out that water back treatment we did because yesterday when we went there, it was very late in the afternoon. The shadows were long, so we couldn't see how green the water was with the blue-green algae. So come along. Let's go. You right, Cara? Come on. Well, if it wasn't so for the dogs, <laughs> we'd be in a lot of trouble now, wouldn't we? Water back treatment in here, again, we can't see because the sun is so low now, meaning it's not as high as it is normally in spring and summertime. So we're getting so much reflection and angle, we can't really see how dirty the water is, how blue green it is. So we might have to set up a proper production for this one here for you guys to be able to appreciate the before and after shots. So I'll let the crew actually pull that together and take some shots for us to show us what it looks like now before that bacteria, the microbial activity starts to kick in and eats up all that algae. I can tell a little bit here, look at it, it's breaking away on the edges here where the, the algae is on the side there, but that's all going to disappear in the next week or so. So yeah, we'll get that happening for you. Another thing I want to share with you now, because we're getting very close to the season, and that, that is rose printing time, but wait. <laughs> I can smell lunch has been served, so <laughs> we might go and have something to eat and then we'll go and through some roses. <laughs> have a look at these chicken meatballs freshly cooked or baked. Mmm, oh. delicious. No, folks, these aren't oh, my chickens. These aren't my chickens. I only get eggs for my chickens. Hey, Carla? Mmm. Now we're going to share this recipe with you too, with Mama when we go back to visit her. How to make these beautiful chicken meatballs and vegetarian meatballs. These are huge roses, folks, and I'm not going to prune these with a pair of secateurs. There is no way on earth that I'm going to sit here meticulously going through these bushes to try and shape them up again with a pair of secateurs. If you've got bushes like this, trust me, it works much easier and you're a lot more satisfied at the end if you use yourself the hedge trimmer. We'll do that a little bit later on because these aren't quite ready. You can see they're still pushing on some flowers there. And it is cold, but if I prune them now, they'll actually go back into growth again and that'll get a bit of frostbite because it'll be so tender and succulent. These ones we'll do a little bit later on. Let's go to the little ones over here next to the water feature. Now these are standard roses, iceberg obviously. And these were, when we first got here, very, very, in a very, very bad state basically. They were struggling, they weren't looking good. We had a few problems with the hedging here as well. We had a bit of uh, the conifer canker or die back on them. So we had to get rid of those conifers. We've saved a couple on the edge. We got rid of uh, one of the mop tops here and we lost one of the pencil, three pencil pines, that's in fact. So if you've been following us over the journey here with the redevelopment of these garden beds, we lost three pencil pines and the conifer hedge at the back because they were, they were they had that sapping oozing out from them and that was stress which we couldn't save them. So we had to cut them out and we've replaced them with espalier citrus trees just over there. They're doing wonderfully well. They've settled down. But what we're going to talk about quickly here is pruning your standard roses. Open vase shape, and it's not about opening up the center as much as it is to create that open fill overall. So what we do is always cut back to a bud, and you can come back two or three buds, and it's always on an outward facing bud. Here is an inward facing bud. So you wouldn't cut to that. You would cut away to there, and you would also cut to there. Now, when I say cut back to an outward facing bud, you find the center of the plant, and you look along the stem itself, 
and you look for a bud that is actually pointing away from the center. Now, I haven't got my glasses on, that's tiny there, but I'm gonna have a guess, that's it there. So you cut on a slight angle and just above the bud itself. Now, how far back do you cut? It's really up to you. I've seen some of these roses, standard roses that is, and even bush roses cut back to a knuckle. That is basically almost back to the stump itself, the trunk itself where it's grafted. I don't like that. That's about three or four years old, even older than that. You can see that hardwood there, and then you can see the green wood here. Now that's at least a year old, if not two, and the same over here. Now this is this year's growth. All this stuff up here is this year's spring summer growth. You can cut back to about two or three buds from the base there. Some of you may say that's wrong Vasily, but you know what? It works for me. And I'll cut off this one here. See, now that's the leg we've got, that, that fork. So we get rid of that one there and we'll leave that one there. And we cut that off. That's what we're looking to do there. And again, over here, or we'll just cut back up to there. It's slightly facing in, but we'll get away with it. If not, just there. So that's one. Now we go to this one here. Have a look at this structure here. Have a look at that. There's all sorts of things going on. We don't need all this part down here. So we can cut that off there, that off there. And have a look here. So there's a bud down there. Beautiful. We'll cut to that. Like that. And there's no bud there. That's the, I don't know what they call that, dog leg, whatever you like to call it. Just cut that off completely. Oop, didn't cut that properly. There you are. And again here. Cut that there and there. And we do the same across here. So that's the sort of thing you want to do to your rows. Clean it up. Not too many buds facing in the same direction. Thin it out. And inside the middle as well. Have a look at this down here. That's got to get cut off completely because that's in the middle. That's got to get cut off completely because that's growing up in the middle. We don't need that. You don't need to grow so much in there. There's a little one in here as well. We can get rid of that or just cut it to there for now. And we go through the entire rows and create that open vase. So have a close look. We're going to cut away from this. And as soon as I finish, I'm going to show you the finished product. So study that. Imagine what you would do to this. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment. And when I finish, we'll compare notes and see what we've done. Okay, let me see if I get it right, or if you guessed exactly what I'm about to do to this. Now, that's a start. You can go harder than that if you like, but it's basically giving it a haircut. You sit there and just judge it and see if it needs a little bit more off there. Get rid of some of that dieback. Now, you can get rose canker, which is dieback of that wood. And you're all saying, well, is he ignoring that? No, I'm not ignoring it. Have a look at it. <laughs> Tough as nails they are. That's the rootstock taking off, so it's sporting from the bottom there. It's suckering up. You've got to cut those out. Now, to stop that from happening, simply cutting it to the ground, to the level of the soil or mulch is not going to stop it. You need to get into where it starts and sort of gouge out where it starts from on the root. So for now, I'm just going to cut it off like this. Get that out of my way. And this one here, because if this falls on me, I'll be pricked all over. Get that down there like that. Cut it into small sections. And then we'll go down there and see if we can find where it starts from. Let's have a look. Have a look at this. We've got roots everywhere. Like that. So you get your little knife onto these. Look at that, we've had suckers coming up all the time here. Just gonna get cut off all the time. Like that. I gotta try and get down to the bottom of this and dig it out. Oh, wait, you know what? You're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're down to the base here, exposing it all. You really don't want to get your second turtles caught up in, in the mud because it'll blunt them. These are gonna need to be sharpened and washed and everything afterwards. So. Ah, there we are. Got it out. So, cut it out completely, not just above the ground. Get rid of it completely. And if you can, dig into it a little bit too. And maybe paint over with a little bit of a water-based paint to stop any disease getting in there. And leave it exposed so it can colour us over. It's getting to the season where it's time to prune your roses. Monitor the weather. Mid-June, late-June, you can start pruning back your roses and get them into shape and ready for springtime as well. And remember, they're going to need a good feed in August. And we'll talk about that as we get there. From Eva Silly, Marisi.